So to begin with last week, um, I was in Rossville, although I stayed in Topeka that night. And um, I kind of stayed with a whole bunch of family members from one family. So I stayed with one daughter of Janet's. And then I went to Rossville and I stayed with Janet, who's the mom. And then her daughter and granddaughter came over. And then the next night I stayed with her other daughter in um, north of Topeka. I stayed with her. And it was interesting because that day I walked, it was like 113, I think, that day. And I walked 18 miles. Yeah, it was hot. And the lovely thing is that she came and picked me up off the side of the road took me to her house where there was a swimming pool. Not just a swimming pool, but a saltwater swimming pool. And the pool was not actually 113 degrees, which is amazing. It was felt cool and refreshing. We just I started off that day, that evening, just soaking in their pool. Yeah, I got connected to this family. And um, the interesting thing is that the younger daughter went off to college to become a nurse and got interested in being a mortician and became a mortician. And then the daughter I stayed with, Annette, married a funeral director. So suddenly they were in the business of, of uh, funeral business <laughs> as a family, which not was not was not expected really. Uh, it was kind of a funny thing that from two different branches of the family for two different reasons they ended up in the funeral business. And when you know, with the big tornado that went through Joplin, one of the things I never thought about is what happens with the bodies. And the fact that the you know when everything's all topsy turvy, um, that the funeral directors would need local funeral directors would need some help, and so they went and helped with that. And then because they were going down there, neighbors would stop by their house in outside of Topeka and just drop off supplies and blankets and things and jackets and whatever um, food, and they'd take that down when they went down. So I thought that was an interesting community I had not thought of when I started this trip. Is that I might be connected to a, a funeral home community. There's so many communities and micro communities in this country that I hadn't explored or thought about before I started on this journey. And when I was thinking of community centers, I always think this, one of the community centers I didn't think of are bars. Sometimes the little local bar in a town really is the community center also, and everybody knows everybody there. I, I had to redirect my whole route because I was planning on going through at Atchison into Missouri. Well, Atchison is flooded. And it isn't flooded because there's been a lot of rain. It's actually been a drought and flood year this year because the flood is coming, the flooding is coming from, let me make sure I get this right, South Dakota and Wyoming got record snowfall this year. And then it melts. And then it went into the reservoirs. And then the Corps of Engineers had to decide what to do with all this. Ultimately, they have to release it and they're still releasing it. So it is flooded out all the farmland along the Missouri. And this area is experiencing sort of drought and flooding at the same time. So I rerouted through um, Leavenworth instead and had to kind of figure out some towns along the way. Well, I went to Osaka, oh, no, Osaki, which used to, it's a town that used to be um, in one location and then back in the 60s they moved the town and sometimes physically moved the buildings the government gave them money because they made it into a lake <laughs> and you can't really live in a home at the bottom of the lake so I went I walked all the way to that town but my my hostess from a couple nights before the mom Janet didn't they, everyone was trying to find some connection in Osaki and we didn't end up finding anything but she had a lawyer, she works in a law office, and she has a lawyer that she works with who is an animal rights activist and vegetarian. And he took me to the Humane Society to stay the night actually in the Humane Society with all the doggies and kitties and everything. I mean, I wasn't sleeping with them. I was in, a, in the office on a blow-up mattress. But he said, yeah, we'll take her in. Well, he not only took me in, but I ended up on a float in a parade. <laughs> so I was on the float in the parade down down uh, Main Street in Valley Falls and waved and gave out candy and uh, they had little stuffed animals with Humane Society pendants on them and uh, that was very funny and then slept at the Humane Society which was quite calm at night. I guess dogs and cats go to sleep, don't they? And then the next day I got up and walked to McLeod and he connected me to Candy who works with Clydesdales and she took me out for to the local bar to have dinner with her friends. Then. 
she, because I met Candy, I got connected to horsewomen of the Midwest. And I, I stayed at several women's houses who do fox hunting. And that, again, is another one of those communities I never would have thought of if I hadn't done this project where I'm trying to connect to all these communities. And it's always like a chain of friends. Somebody calls ahead. So Candy is not, uh, I don't think she does fox hunting, or if she does, she has Clydesdale, so I don't think she does fox hunting. And she connected me to Karen in outside of Leavenworth, and she was the one who used to be the head organizer for this fox hunt. And so she connected me to um, uh, this Main Street Gallery in Weston. And Weston is a very interesting little town. It used to be bigger than Kansas City. In fact, it was along the river and it was a big tobacco growing region and boats would pull up and there's a lot of commerce. And then back in, I, I can't remember my dates, I think late 1800s, early 1900s, there was a flood, just like now. And they're going through the same issue now. The river will not be the same. When the flooding goes down, it may have redirected itself. So that's what happened to Weston. I asked her, why is Weston so pristine? And it's just old buildings and really, it's a touristy place now and very sweet and beautiful and lots of antique shops and restaurants. And she said, well, the river moved and they had no commerce. So what, even though they were bigger than Kansas City, they stopped booming. And it became a small town and, and just kind of stayed the way it was. And I stayed at a haunted gallery and my viewing audience was uh, privy to a preview of the um, mystery dinner theater that they were doing a rehearsal for. Linnell was great. She brought an air mattress and blew up an air mattress and set it up in the cafe. And she wanted to tell me some ghost stories, but the way things go with, I have no, I don't know, no sense of time and schedule. We went to O'Malley's. We took a tour of the town and she told me about um, the auction house down by the river. They were doing the tobacco auction there until just a few years ago. Um, even though it wasn't on the river anymore, they still kept up that tradition. And then we went to O'Malley's and this is a cool place. You, they went to the restaurant upstairs and she bought me dinner, which was nice. And then we went down into the caverns beneath the building and they're big, you know, stone curved arch windows. And you go down and down and down and down. And each cavern area is set up with tables and chairs and all done up. And then you go down another level and then that's set up and you get very down to the very bottom. And it's the bar. So there's this big arch and you go through it and at the back wall there's another arch and the whole ceiling is curved and that's the bar and there's a railing. You come up on the railing level and then go down into the bar. And there was a, a, a man singing Irish songs wearing a tam and a kilt and um, we hung out there a little bit. And then we went back to the gallery and Linnell, because she's a horsewoman, um, had to go home and do chores and take care of her animals. By the time she got back she was going to tell me ghost stories. I was zonked out. It was, I don't know when she got back, but I fell asleep at 10 o'clock, so I didn't get to hear ghost stories before I went to sleep, which might have been a good thing. I had a perfectly smooth night's sleep with no ghosts. And then in the morning, she, she uh, told me a couple of the things. They weren't really ghost stories so much as sightings. And they, they all, the, she works there, and another woman who works there told me about different sightings they personally had had, you know, seeing something you know, see, she said one night she came down, or no, it was during the day she was working. She was putting stuff away, and there was a mirror right next to the shelf unit. It's an old, with an old bar, you know, with a big mirror, and then on each side are wooden cabinets with little curio stuff that they, she was putting in there. And she saw a man leaning on the counter like this in the mirror. And she thought, okay, I'll just let him wait a second, and I'll, I'll wait on him. And he was right behind her. And she turned around and wasn't there. And she saw him clear as day. I was planning on trying to get to St. Joe. No one, St. Joe I figured was a big black hole or something, because nobody. I talked to 20 people that morning. Everyone's like, I don't know anybody in St. Joe. St. Joe's 25 miles away, and it's a big city. And then I, I walked up the road, and I just thought, well, I'll just get going. And, and I got to um, Newmarket, which is a town of about 100 people, maybe less. And I saw that there was a truck parked outside of the church. And I still didn't have anywhere to sleep that night. So I stopped in there and I, you know, I said, do you know anybody up at St. Joe? No, I don't know any. Ma, his mother was there. It was in her 
close to 90 and she didn't know anybody in St. Joe. And I said, how come nobody knows anybody in St. Joe? It's a big city, right? It's just north of here. And he said, well, from here south, everyone goes to Kansas City. And from here north, people go to St. Joe. So I could tell you 20 different people in, St. in Kansas City, but I don't know anybody in St. Joe. And I thought that was kind of interesting. So he said, well, Fawcett's the next town and they have a truck stop and they have a motel there, a truck stop motel. And I said, can I stay at a truck stop motel? Oh yeah, I think so. Well, my mom called back and says, well, Donna says, don't tell everybody at the truck stop what you're doing. <laughs> don't tell all these strange men that you're walking across the country by yourself. Well, sure enough, I ended up having dinner there and talking to all the truckers and telling them exactly what I was doing. Again, it's another micro community where they're, you know, these guys have been doing this for 20 or 30 years. It's hard to be an independent trucker these days. It's like the Walmarting of trucking business, where a big truck company can have, you know, a hundred trucks and truckers that work for them and pay them far less than an independent guy who has to pay his own gas and insurance and everything. So that's it. That was my week.